Rainfalls in southern Africa are strongly seasonal, with high rainfalls in the summer and prevailing dry conditions in the winter. Patterns and incidents of rainfalls are strongly tied to the southern African monsoon. These are monsoonal rainfalls. Let's see how these come about. Patterns of precipitation are driven by an interaction between large-scale atmospheric circulation, rotation of the Earth, and the tilt of the Earth on its axis with respect to the Earth's orbital plane about the Sun. Let's turn first to atmospheric circulation. We start with the Earth, surrounded by an atmosphere, greatly exaggerated in size, and the Sun. The Sun warms the Earth, with the heating greatest at the equator. This warms the air there, making it buoyant. This sets in motion a large-scale vertical circulation called a Hadley cell. There's a North Hadley cell and a South Hadley cell. The vertical circulation of the Hadley cell sets in motion other patterns of circulation at higher latitudes. Poleward from the Hadley cells are the feral cells, North and South, also known as mid-latitude cells. Still further poleward, there are the polar cells, again north and south. Weather and climate are largely set by where these circulation cells meet. Near the equator, where warm air is being lofted by buoyant forces, low barometric pressure prevails, humidity is high, and rainfall is abundant. At the mid-latitudes, where the Hadley cells and feral cells meet, it is high barometric pressure that prevails. Humidity is low, and rainfalls are sparse. This is why deserts worldwide tend to occur at the mid-latitudes. The rotation of the Earth combines with these vertical circulation cells to produce a characteristic pattern of surface winds. The Earth rotates west to east. This is why the sun always rises in the east. As the Earth rotates beneath it, the Hadley cell circulation produces a characteristic east-to-west surface wind. North of the equator, these are oriented northeast to southwest. South of the equator, the winds are southeast to northwest. These tropical latitude winds are called the trade winds. Along the equator, the trade winds meet in the Intertropical Convergence Zone, or ITZZ, at the juncture between the North and South Hadley cells. In the ITCZ, prevailing conditions are low barometric pressure, high humidity, and high rainfall. Monsoonal rains are found along the ITCZ. This is why the equatorial latitudes are typically green and wet. In the mid-latitudes, the feral cells interact with the Earth's rotation to produce surface winds opposite in direction to the trade winds. In the northern hemisphere, these are oriented southwest to northeast, and in the southern hemisphere, from northwest to southeast. The latitudes where the Hadley cells and feral cells meet are known as the horse latitudes, and range from the subtropics to the temperate zones. Conditions here, recall, are high barometric pressure, low humidity, and low rainfall. This is why the arid zones are located along the horse latitudes. Finally, the Earth's rotation interacts with the polar cells to produce characteristic surface winds opposite in direction to that produced by the feral cells. In both north and south polar latitudes, winds are in the same direction as the trade winds, northeast to southwest in the northern hemisphere, and southeast to northwest in the southern hemisphere. Where the polar cells and feral cells meet, the polar vortex, stormy conditions also prevail. This is why the temperate regions are commonly green. The tilt of the Earth's axis with respect to its orbital plane complicates things further. This is an idealized situation with the sun situated over the equator. This places the rainy weather associated with the ITCZ right over the equator, and the dry conditions associated with the horse latitudes distributed symmetrically north and south of the equator. These conditions only prevail at two times of the year, the spring or vernal equinox in mid-March, and the autumn or autumnal equinox in mid-September. This language is for the northern hemisphere, Properly, we should call these the March equinox and the September equinox.
These are only way stations of the migration of the sun's position in the sky through the year. From the vernal equinox to the solstice in June, the sun's position in the sky migrates north, and with it the global circulation cells and the positions of the bands of wet and dry weather. This is the northern hemisphere summer. From the June solstice, the sun's position in the sky migrates south back to the equator and continues to march south to the December solstice. This is the southern hemisphere summer and northern hemisphere winter. As the sun migrates south, the Hadley and Farrell cells migrate with it and the bands of stormy and dry conditions that correspond to them. This is when the monsoonal rains come to southern Africa and why these are a summer phenomenon. The intensity and timing of monsoonal rains varies considerably, mostly through the interaction of these large-scale atmospheric circulation patterns with modifications of ocean currents. This is why the Namib may have, in recent times, been a much wetter environment than it is presently.